Hello comic book fans, here's Earl Grey with my last episode about my favorite comics, graphic novels, Omnibuy, Trades, what have you, from 2016. And this will be a longer one, um, first and foremost, because there will be 15 books. I just have to compete with the amazing amount of good comics or interesting comics and this is more let's say on the interesting side uh, brian shippendale's puke force put out by uh, drawn and quarterly um, was first published on the internet and as you can see it has this very underground the direct wild drawing style and the stories are best described uh, same wild and, and direct and pretty soapy in fact because all these characters are interacting with each other on, on many levels and it takes a while to decipher all that stuff um, it's not linear clear as you can see it's uh, pretty messed up but I like it But I have to confess, the main reason why I originally bought it was this bright, shiny graffiti cover. I, I like it a lot. Number 14 is a tiny something from Fantagra Fantagraphics, Mox Nox, from, uh, or by jo Joan Cornella. Joan Cornella. And this is just weird stuff um, let me show you some pages and you get the impression pretty surrealistic um, mean cynic sarcastic humor lots of lots of amputations and slime and long genitalia <laughs> and um, more slime and more blood and more gore and more weirdy freaky freak out stuff and yeah I totally my kind of humor in a way and I had to laugh quite a lot and quite a bit about this thing here so I guess now up to 13 is this little book by Michael DeForge, Big Kids. Hey, it's Michael DeForge and what can I tell you? His usual obsessions with sexuality, identity, even some of his Bogo's biology stuff, um, which I usually, usually enjoy quite a bit. Um, only thing that was bad with this thing here is that it's really very small and uh, the reading enjoyment is over before you have started it but otherwise Michael DeForge always good and then 15, 14, 13 that's now number 12 this is a double shot. Um, Mac and Mark and in Amsterdam, in case you can, can't read this uh, scripture over there, put out by Fantagraphics, of course. And uh, the book that I have in my right hand, The Ghosts We Know, from uh, by Sean Caremaker was published by Conundrum Press. Yeah, Meg and Mark is the second hardcover of this series of group of friends. Um, uh, they are pretty assholey to each other, especially this owl has to endure a lot. Um, Simon Hanselman draws this group of stoner people in lush watercolors and 
very well crafted and a joy to look at but when you read the stories it's not always enjoyment it's sometimes um, painful embarrassing you are embarrassed for these people here and maybe you don't want to get stoned after that um, yeah it's not presented as a favorable a favorable lifestyle um, who knows and um, but I, I Megan Mark in Amsterdam is a beautiful book, of course. Um, and this is as well a very beautiful book, The Ghosts We Know by uh, Sean Kermaker, like I said it. And this is by far a more, a nicer uh, approach to, to our world of human beings okay there are some strange stuff hap uh, happening but these are short uh, autobiographic pieces uh, drawn and presented on the double pages here in a very unique uh, way and uh, you have to work your way through the pages maybe like old in the old mad magazines also or um, will Eisner maybe um, but with a more undergroundy approach and we have even some color stuff here in it yeah, it's more this hippie stuff come on dudes I tell you something about my life and maybe it's good for you and I sort of like it it's nice uh, between the, all the cynicism that has piled uh, book on book uh, full of cynicism this is heartwarming and and nice to look at on rank 11 another fantagraphics book boys club about these four boys living together and sharing a flat sort of lowbrow Seinfeld without chicks and lots of toilet humor and fart jokes and stuff like that and yeah I'll tell you what I am shallow enough to enjoy this a lot and looks nice and uh, yeah I really had a great time with this little book here with this <laughs> sorry <laughs> German speaking English sometimes it's cruel with this uh, book I had a similar fun time but in uh, another way I guess Gulag Casual, Five Stories by Austin English. And as you may know, I'm a totally art snob and stuff like that, that it's almost, um, yeah, where people and the uh, figures are almost not decipherable and you don't know what's going on. I, and everything is smeared and the colors bright and it's there's collage in it and it may, uh, reminds me of Willem de Koning a great American expressionist some painter uh, other painters maybe abstract painters and I don't know really anything about these stories I can follow uh, what he wants to tell us here it's about people that are living close together and personal relationships and, and stuff like that and it's pretty claustrophobic they are all encaged literally in these uh, thick black uh, borders of the, these panels and he has a lot going on and it's maybe a bit like uh, elementary school art but it's very elementary, uh, very elemental, very powerful and uh, very poetic in, in some ways. 
and I like some pages are uh, pretty gorgeous. And this is a book I can read every time and, and understand maybe each with each reading a bit more and more questions occur. This book was published by uh, 2D Cloud and um, yeah, it's pretty brilliant and highly recommended. Rank number 10. Rank number nine, I guess, as long as nine follows on 10. It's Panther from, by Brecht Evans. And this is a mean little bullet into your heart, uh, or big bullet, because it's so damn beautiful, as you can see, with all these colors and it's about a girl uh, who loses her cat right in the beginning. Here you can see it. The, the cat is ill and the father has to go to the, um, to the doctor and he uh, has to... Oh, I don't know uh, how the right word is. He has to kill her, uh, kill it, the cat. And uh, then at first you think this uh, this girl has some illusions. Uh, some imaginary friend appears out of the drawer, drawer and it's a panther who is a creature of many different outward appearances he constant is constantly changing um, his look as you can see here and I hope the beauty of the this art here um, is seen on the screen really Every part of the pages are uh, each each panel, so to speak, even though they are not uh, encased. Um, each each or oh, here there there it is. Uh, each each panel is is beautiful. Each page is is a joy to look at. But there's it turns out to be a real spoiler, I guess real sinister story and again spoiler it seems that uh, this panther and um, and some other animals are just illusions this girl makes up because she uh, got abused by some man and she made all these uh, cute figures up to deal with this uh, in a way, or oh, it's uh, it's pretty ambiguous, but it's pretty clear as well that there are some evil things going on with this girl, and this is really hard stuff. And uh, no uh, child book uh, at all, uh, even though it looks like all these pretty books for chi for children, and and it, it's not. Um, I forgot to mention, it's a book by Drawn and Quarterly. On 8, After Nothing Comes from Aidan Koch, um, published by Koyama Press, collects um, selected scenes, scenes from uh, this lady, Aidan Koch. And these are more artworks uh, than anything else um, were originally. And um, I guess with very low print runs and, and stuff like that, more, more stuff to put out in a gallery and, and to show and um, then uh, in a comic book shop. Very poetic and very mysterious, 
but with a lot of space uh, that the art can breathe. Um, I really like it a lot. Some things are really short. A short. Yeah, these are poems with drawings, I, th I guess, at, in part wise, and that's maybe the best to describe it. Or poems without words, even. So short, atmospheric, highly recommended. Really one of the big discoveries this year. A bit, uh, it's a bit of a sketchbooky feel uh, as well, I think. On seven, this is uh, way more mainstream. Um, comic book stuff, European style, European album sized format, hardcover, put out by the German edition Splitter and there's of course a French version uh, out. Um, written by Wilfried Lupano, drawn by Paul Cauet about a group of uh, old men who want who keep the revolution going and they're always good for um, political demonstration and showing the young dudes how the uh, how the revolution is uh, done and they're really fa funny characters even though they're old they're full of life and good-hearted well uh, good-hearted people and the story is funny as hell. All three volumes that are, uh, that were published uh, until now, and I hope a lot more to come. Even though it has a bit the soap opera TV series feel, maybe, and it would be a real good TV series when I think of it. Um, yeah. The, uh, did I mention the title? The Alten Knacker, the old sex, the the old ones. And this is uh, volume three, The One Who Goes. So well, this is number six and it's Love and Rockets, Rockets New Stories, number eight. And as things appear, this is the last in this format uh, new stories because in the meantime they um, publish also the Hernandez brothers of course uh, publish their new comics in uh, issues floppy form haven't got, got my fingers on that stuff uh, to be honest and this bugs me quite a lot um, but I'm sure they will um, collect the stuff in, in, in some form, trade or something, and, and then I will get it. Um, and I have to be honest, this form of uh, mixing up Gilbert's heart uh, or Gilbert stories who get crazier each, uh, each book and uh, the classic Raimi Hernandez stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's crazy as well, but a bit more classic. Uh, but Maggie and Hopi here. Yeah. The, the highlight in each episode uh, uh, this old bringing back the band together from way back then with Maggie and, and Hopi. I am. Anyhow, uh, this is by far the best part in this book here, and the mix is is a bit hard to read, uh, and, and you got get snippets uh, of each story, and then you have to wait another year 
that was really hard and I think I'm an old Love and Rockets fan and I think for a newbie it's almost impossible to get into this universe. I don't know if it's so much easier with the new magazines. I've heard uh, some people complaining this is yeah, tough as well to get into the stuff. I don't know. Um, haven't read this yet. Rank number five, The Art of Charlie Chan Hock Chai by Sonny Liu and put out by Pantheon. This is a nice book with embossed drawing um, by a fictional comic creator, cartoonist from Singapore called Charlie Chan Hock Chai. Here we have him. And Sonny Liu, uh, Sonny Liu did everything to make us feel that he was real, which is, he is, again, he wasn't a real character. Um, but he tells uh, with great love for the detail the life of this man who lived for comics and with some uh, supposedly private um, findings and, and sketches and photos and his first comic endeavors done in this simple in clear style up to more recent uh, stuff with superhero comics uh, in the end and he is Roachman spin-off from Batman and the Shadow as well and that's <laughs> Maybe the problem of this, or surely the problem of this fictional comic creator, uh, that he was always more a fan of comics than a real comic artist, if I pretend pretentiously dare to say so, because he has never really invented something really new. It's all more, uh, always more a homage to Western comics. But that's the fun of it that you can here, for ex uh, uh, example, can um, witness a sort of history of comic books from a different angle, because these uh, animal comics are um, very Pogo-like, of course, and yeah, like a chameleon, uh, this Chan Hokshai worked himself through the comic book history and the history of Singapore, which I have n never anything heard of, and here I get some got some information in passing, really in depth. Uh, about the, the history of Singapore, which was pretty interesting. And it's a very uh, ambitious endeavor without being really pretentious. It's nice, nice fun package. It was really good, very recommended. Yeah, on four, it's my cheapest purchase, my cheapest purchase of the year. Neat Stuff, The Complete Neat Stuff by Peter Bagg. You have to check out my panology uh, about this one. This is a fantastic package. On three, it's One Diabolic Summer, Ein Diabolischer Sommer. And this book, I hope you can see it. It's beautifully made here. This is, you can feel these, these lines here on the cover. And it's shiny <laughs> and colorful. Done by, oh, one Smolderen and Clarice. I hopelessly butcher these names. Thierry Smolderen and, and uh, art by Alexandre Clarice. I guess they're French. And the way he draws women, sure he is French. 
And this is uh, in a way meta like uh, the art of Charlie Sean Hockshai because uh, it's, it pretends to be a comic from 1987 uh, which goes back into 1967 which is not. All these art here is, I know this is a bit a downer, uh, done by computer, but anyhow, it, it looks cool, very uh, special about, <laughs> look at this, these colorful panels. It's really unique and old fashioned in the same time, these uh, Paul Flora-esque, illustrations uh, of the 50s or 60s. Um, if you like stuff like that, uh, you get a handful of that stuff thrown into your face on each page and almost each panel. Um, I like this uh, color, the, this art style immensely and it's yeah, wonderful. About a first love of this guy, but more so about his very difficult relationship to his father, who is more absent uh, than really there. And someday he disappears and there are murderers and it's really dark and gets darker in the end. Uh, that much can I tell you without spoiling uh, too much because you have this feel that there's something not right, right from the start. So I don't think it's a spoiler, even though the characters are enjoying themselves and um, we enjoy what they are doing because it looks so damn beautiful. And uh, this book could be easily uh, my number one pick of, uh, of this list here. And all the three last books are, that's really a bit, yeah, uh, uh, by chance, uh, which made it to the top. All three of them are beautiful. Uh, here are some LSD involved. So the colors got a bit even more beautiful. And this diabolic character um, in this comic was actually the reason why I checked out all these um, Italian Fumetti stuff. Uh, somehow I can't re uh, remember it so concretely, but uh, it was at least one of the bigger reasons why I want to check out these Fumetti and, and when uh, you have um, seen my panology about these Fumetti, you know that I was up to my ears in Fumetti the last year. Rank number two, it is Highbone Theatre by Joe Daly, put out by Fantagraphics. And it was a big surprise for me because I've read already from Joe Daly uh, the Red Monkey comic. And Joe Daly has sometimes um, a knack for this very decompressed storytelling. And that was in the Red Monkey story a bit too decompressed for me. Uh, so it was, to be honest, pretty boring. Uh, part wise. So I uh, wondered for a while if I should buy this book, but uh, fortunately I bought it and it, it's great fun. Um, it's about this Eric Palmer dude with his shrunken head, and uh, I got almost this to be the pinhead feel, all, uh, although he's uh, more. Uh, more intelligent, he's uh, a sensitive, good guy, a bit naive and not really fitting into this world and he has, uh, has problems to uh, communicate sometimes and he lives in his dream world that's sometimes drug-induced 
but uh, he has some problems with this this tough enough uh, tough uh, friends of his who yeah, screw one girl after the other while our Eric poor Eric uh, don't score any time because of his good heart and he's so sh so shy and stuff like that um, he is on a spiritual journey to find his inner self and there are some drugs induced and almost every time when he uses drugs he has this colorful, colorful uh, visions uh, and he searches his mojo and he plays Mongolian folk music and is sometimes really cool and sometimes be he believes every conspiracy theory that is thrown at him ah, overall a really nice character that you can hardly forget after reading this what, more than 500 pages of pure comic book fun and uh, even though it's pretty disturbing sometimes and um, has a the background in 9-11 in uh, plays somehow a part in it and yeah there's a lot of stuff in it and one reason more for me uh, to say that Fantagraphics was maybe once more my publisher of the year um, 2016 and uh, what would we do without a publisher like Fantagraphics? Or these small publishers like Conundrum Press and believe it or not, Paul, Paul up north uh, from Michel Rapagliati is my number one of uh, collected comics, graphic novels, only by etc. etc. about the real life. It's another iteration of these autobiographic uh, books from Michel Rabagliati. Rabagliati, who lives in the French part of Canada. And these books were originally in French. And uh, <laughs> this book is so real, uh, talking about real life. Just the first page, I show you that. If you have a kid who's, who happens to be 16, and my, big, my elder son is 16, and you see on the first page this wordless panels, where nothing really happens, just the mother enters the room, nothing more it's so funny believe it or not maybe if you don't have a son who is in this um, difficult age you won't understand it and to top it uh, at all this um, self-portrait of Paul looks pretty much like my elder son with the long hair and all um, yeah I had quite a laugh maybe it's not for you if you don't have a kid. But maybe we, we all got through uh, through this time. Um, it's um, oh how do you call it? coming of age story, um, where all these pimples grew and you uh, yeah have your loves um, yeah girls. Um, who you couldn't reach and then maybe someday there is one and and you have friends to do extreme party things get almost killed in the snow and here you have your first drug abuse drug um, experience and these are fittingly enough uh, the only colored pages in the whole book and it's pretty crazy all done in this very old school cartoony drawing style <clears throat> which i like a lot if it's done good there's a lot of this stuff who 
don't appeal to me for whatever reasons because maybe it's too cartoony too cute uh, this book is not really cute maybe you can call it cute but it's real extremely real um, it's, it was during the, the Olympic Games in 1976 I suppose in Canada where they don't got any gold medal which seems to bug Mr. Rabagliati a lot since today but um, until now I want to say mm, I really have to say uh, have to make a panelogy about this Paul books there's a really a couple of them I don't have them all and uh, here I saw there are two books the song of Roland Roland and Paul joins the scouts which I don't own and so I have to get them but yeah so people this was more improvised than the other uh, top 10 top 5 whatever but I hope you yeah you had had a bit of fun and, and uh, found this stuff here rela um, interesting and relatable and all all that and yeah thanks for listening and watching and let us hope uh, let's hope that 2017 will be a much better year or at least not worse than 2016 I top my teacup to all of you. Thanks again for listening and watching. Goodbye.